was that intentional like a michael jackson yeah. thing dana it's called the future wow. And I was the Kanye of that premiere, and I have <laughs> work boots which work cool. I had those. For, my coat doesn't fit. Do you have a starter joke? Three, two, one. No, Beth. I will Hi, start this off by showing you a video. Little energy. Oh, you're going to show a yeah, video. Yeah, I'm going to try because we're on video. We're right, on video, so I want to show it. I have my first let's SNL audition, and I don't think you saw it. And I said, let's start this with something to talk about. So f- I tried to watch it in Lauren's office and then he goes, oh, there's better things to talk about. He clicked it off. So I'd never saw oh, this it. This is it ready. Okay. Cause I want to show that I can sing like that. and I'm not one dimensional. Oh, oh, you look great. <laughs> me. What a with you. <laughs> I added that fake plan at the that end. Was good. Yeah. I didn't know you could do that. The surprise is I'm going to be in my arsenal next week. Your actual audition, what was your first joke? My first joke, oh, when I did S, I think my old joke uh, when I used to do my act, which I think is still in it. It's, um, I bought a new car. Uh, well, it's not really new. It's an old UPS truck. I got it so I can park wherever I want. That's not bad. I. I think I remember that when you were my Oprah, by the way, a dandy little mm-hmm. opener. When we toured the Northeast, mm-hmm. we in a rental yeah. car. I remember that line. Yeah, that yeah. was that was uh, one of my big ones. I looked young back then, not this haggard fucking Nick Nolte after the dryer cycle that you see. I talked you. to Betty Davis's granddaughter. Lighting is everything. We're going to talk later. You're going to have to. <laughs> you look great. What are you doing? I just want to preen and Come print. Come on. <laughs> <Am> I- <laughs> Every time I walk by a uh, mirror, my dad used to go, see anybody you like? <laughs> oh, we also what have a, professional a... laughers on the set. We should introduce us. <laughs> oh, yeah. We brought them Christy. in. They're the professional laughers union, yeah. the president, Heather Santoro, Santoro <laughs> and Chris Rios, who's also a beauty consultant to the stars yeah. and others. And things. so they are going to be laughing when we point. Okay. <laughs> So I'm going to start you off. You can't Dana. see them, but they're but they've been laughing their ass off the whole time. The audience can't see. I them. think we talk because we talk all the hot topics. Let's talk about this Johnny Depp trial. Let's just do, <laughs> let's do it for hot topics. No, Johnny yeah, Depp. We're going. Now, we're no. I'm just kidding. We're going back ways. No, I'm going to tell you quickly. What do you got? Because this podcast would do better if it was a Taylor Swift chat room. So I think we're going to open with Super Bowl stuff because a couple things I have to say about it before yes. we get to Taylor. Because Taylor she Swift. is yeah, Taylor Swift. the whole Super Bowl. Taylor Swift. Course. Taylor Swift. So Taylor Swift. One thing I think that no one's talking about enough is that why is the Super Bowl still having Roman numerals after it? You <laughs> think kids are dumb when you have regular numbers in front of them? Who, what kid is, isn't going V, X, X? They don't know what that is. No, that's a really good point. It always has driven me nuts. I think like outrage over things that don't really matter is great. <laughs> He's like, what the fuck is with the numeral fucking numbers in the Super Bowl? And Just to get really angry. It's a controversial stance, but that's what we're here for. Taylor Swift. I'm feeding the algorithm right <laughs> I now. don't think the algorithm picks up audio, though. How about this one? New nickname for the super couple, Tay-Tay and Kel-Kel. <laughs> Uh-oh. We're, playing- we're, pull- oh, we're okay. pulling them we up. Also, I don't like wow. any Instagram puberty. I don't like, it sounds like pubes. And I also don't like, everything is all caps with them. Is this the fucking Kanye Instagram? Because it's like, Taylor Swift, I read it with all that excitement. And I'm like, I don't, I do care. Well, so. you know, you can be doing pretty well in America. Mm-hmm. You you could make a pretty good amount mm-hmm. of money. And then no matter what, you're just shrunken down. She made $2 billion. That just said she generates $331 million for Kansas City. If she just goes to the city. How, was that what it meant? How many times can she go to the subway there or whatever they have, the fucking Jimmy John's? I mean, come on, Tay-Tay. 33 million? How many times can she go no, to the- No, 333 oh, million have generated because people just hear she's in Kansas City and get in their car and start flooring And they just send, they Venmo oh. Kansas City just money. They're like, ah, they just send Taylor money. Swift, bloop, bloop, bloop. They- Put 10 people in a crazy eight hotel. Each room has 10 people. They're drinking and partying. I have another big uh, controversial stance. Let's say 
First of all, did you know at the Super Bowl, at halftime, Taylor Swift is going to decide the election? <laughs> she walks out and <laughs> picks a candidate, and then they just win because why bother voting? She pointed, and they win. So that's good. Yeah, and then and then her boyfriend picks her up and goes, hip, hip, hooray, because 6'5", 250, 5'11", yeah. 125, do the math. What is their kid going to look like, David? Because they're going to have a kid. 6'5", yeah. 250. That's dad, dad. What if she does mom, like mom? a Beyonce and when they win the Super Bowl, they pan over to her and everyone gives her a little room and then she rubs her stomach like I'm pregnant. And everyone goes, holy fucking shit. And then they jizz all over the screen. <laughs> all of America. Well, your screen looks like it has some My jizz screen. on it. So I don't know <laughs> if that was literal or figurative. There's a... There's a, a a vague sheen over his camera, ladies and gentlemen. I know. It's twice a day. I got to come out I there think... after the porn. <laughs> I was going to tackle the other big story of the Go week. Ahead. Brad Pitt facelift. Oh, yeah. And I do this news. I'm going to do it as, as a beetle. Cause it's called beetle news. Okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> You gotta, you gotta have a name for your thing. Hello, everybody. This is Beastly News, and we're talking about things here. We're talking about <laughs> some people think that Brad Pitt got a got a sucker upper, <laughs> got a sucker upper. You know, you take the turkey neck, mm. you know, and you clinch it up and you cinch it off. You trim the little extras. You wrap it around the ears, you know, and you go walking about. I'm Brad Pitt. You look great now. Yeah, what happened? Why is it working? We're going to look back at this and not laugh, but go, remember when they only gave us one and then they canceled it? Remember we shot the pilot and it was unusable? Oh, oh, here's another thing, Dana. (laughs) When when the kids Mm -hmm. hate billionaires, this is heavy. You can step out of this one if you want. When kids Um, are so mad at billionaires and then you go, oh, Taylor Swift is a billionaire now. Do you have to automatically hate her? Go. Well, you can adjust. Like, as you know, Bernie Sanders used to go, the problem with America is the millionaires and the billionaires. And then he found out, and this is true, Al Franken told me this, he found out he was a millionaire. So the next stump speech, it's the billionaires, you idiots. (laughs) The fucking billionaires. What about the millionaires? They're great. They're they're good guys. I bled into a little bit of Fauci. Oh, yeah, that was a little scratchy Fauci. Um, They're about the same. They're both... (laughs) 90. <laughs> no, I do him as a crosswalk guard. That's how I get into the voice. Bernie Sanders yeah. is a crosswalk guard. It's don't proceed. Don't proceed. The system's rigged. Don't proceed. It's the don't that gets me into that. I, I like it. It's like my pole. It's like me pole was a bit off for a bit. I'm coming back. Sorry. God, why don't I-, I can do voices now and not, no one can stop me. <laughs> we don't have some pesky <laughs> guest. We have the easy laugh so, crowd back there, but you're really nailing it. So who are, who are you taking in the Super Bowl? Can I just ask? Um, who are you taking? You know, I do. I think the. the it's not a three minute. Here's, here's one. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's one team or the other. Uh, uh, I, I can't say because we have so many fans and they'll get mad. But well, you're going to take San oh, Fran. I, I know this. this. Well, I want to insert two. The two comedians that have talked about football who hate sports it's just they make me laugh so jay leno talking about football he'd come into the game and everyone's in there with their beer and watching the game and screaming and he would always say yeah who's the head the red or the yellows it's kind of it he just thought it was just colors and then jerry seinfeld (laughs) said the players move around so much eventually you're just rooting for clothes yeah laundry (laughs) <laughs> yeah, the nine. Yeah, like because they, right, they switch ahead. teams. I would say that I I have another analogy, not to go into this whole Taylor Swift algo, because I do like Taylor Swift. You mean Tay Tay and Kels Kel 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 Kel. So she so it I, I, I sort of try to make this analogy and then it doesn't make any sense. But let's say the reason why guys get somewhat annoyed, let's say we went to a Taylor Swift concert and talked about football whispering the whole time. Uh and that would bother them. But Taylor Swift fans are probably nicer but when you go to a guy's game of football you forget that 90 percent of them are degenerate gamblers so and that doesn't just mean which a common man would think or woman oh 
they're we have to be quiet because they're betting on the winner of the game. Oh no, they bet on every goddamn play. Is it going to be a sweep? Is it going to be a, a button hook? Is it going to be a sucker trap? Oh, yeah. And you bet every game, every play, everything. Who's going to hold the football? Who's it going to kick it to? How many catches they get? So you have to be so riveted to that game, you can't be uh, distracted. And that's why I think people get a little itchy about the Taylor talk. But other than that, I welcome it. I, you know what? It's, See how I came back around outrage. and I'm like, she's great. She is great. We met her at the SNL 40th. She was super sweet. Very pretty. Oh. Yeah. How does it feel to be backpedaling? I'm not really Whoops. backpedaling. I've always said she did. She was Sorry, in Bye. She had one line and she came over. Oh, no, she's great. She's, nice she's great. And I don't have any problem with her. There's so many things going on in the world. The idea of just fucking Taylor Swift, man, drives me nuts. I mean, she's, And they're like, really what nice. about Iran? And you're like, who cares? This Taylor thing <laughs> drives me. I mean, come on, lighten up. I mean, let's unpack this. Where's this outrage coming right, from? I have to, I'm jumping over to the Golden Bachelor. I have one thing to say about it since it's already been over for a while. <laughs> Okay, I'll, I'll take five minutes off. No, it's I'm only exactly, it's only not, one thing. I watch the History Channel, okay? I like to be educated. No, and I didn't even see it. I only watched 11 episodes of it, but... You've hosted it, so oh, yeah. relax. you got Craig. Go ahead. I say The Golden Bachelor, and everyone was really pulling for this guy. This is the last week I can do this joke, because now it's only seven weeks late. But <laughs> The Golden <laughs> Bachelor, and he's like... However old, which isn't that old in real life, and he looks better than me, and he's about you know eighty. So he's out there, and he, and his big he does look he does good. look good. And his big sob yeah. story is, my wife passed away. Sad, I'll give him that. And then he said, I haven't dated since, and I wanted to kind of come back into the scene and you know plow thirty chicks. So uh, it was like, oh great, this is such a cute story. <laughs> so he comes back, yeah. and he's gonna he's gonna ramrod his way through all these. Poor women who I didn't even make fun of that because everyone at that age is like just trying to find a nice person. It's hard to crap on them. They're not twenty two and desperate. They're just like nice people. They're 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 not carnal in the yeah. same way they were in their twenties. Yeah, not like you. Just anyway, so um what? So they So word the word got out. So the word got out, they go, <laughs> Oh, he's such a great guy. And then right toward the end they go, Hey, some woman came out and said, Oh, after his wife died, I dated him for nine months. And they asked him, and he's like, oh, yeah, that skeezer. Like, he doesn't even give a shit. He's like, oh, oh, yeah. No, but I, that was nothing. That was just like a hit it and quit it situation, dine and dash. And they're like, oh, so you're just a regular guy. Got it. You're not quite <laughs> well, the no, Wait a minute, David. Yeah. Let me unpack this. You're saying <laughs> television. Yeah presented something that wasn't quite real are you gonna go on record with that <laughs> i am because are you gonna commit yeah. to sometimes the reality i'm shows easily tricked exactly because i watch these shows and i want it to be real i want them to find romance well because you're a good person mm. you would never yes. trick people like that and the monsters no the All right, here's a here's a quick okay. one because everyone does Trump. Here's my angle on okay. Trump. He's out in the stump and he starts listing the people he's going to go after. Mm. You know, it's really funny to me. We're going to go at, and then it, we're going to go after the communists, the Marxists, the neo Marxists, the socialists, the far left fake news media, the deep state, and the state behind the deep state, <laughs> the deepest state of all. We we call it the deep six. You imagine that? We call it the deep six. We're going to take out the vagabonds, the pirates, and the witches, the Terminites and the Solomites. The Amish have got to go. I'm telling you, they got to go. And we're taking out Poland. I never liked it. It's a creepy place. <laughs> we're taking out Deep Purple, the band. <laughs> Sorry. I, I can listen to Trump forever. It's so fucking funny to hear you just talk about Trump. <laughs> We're doing things. She always goes in the pit. And this is, he reads the teleprompter. He goes, can you imagine that? You imagine that? You've heard of that, right? They're going to build a wall. We're going to build a second wall. You can do a second wall. I didn't know it, but <laughs> but they can do it. <laughs> and the breathing. Oh, let's go to a video bit. Ready? Because there's really oh, no rules here. I'm just going to show you. I w First of Clearly. all, the setup is I was such a premier whore. Back during SNL, you didn't do this as much. But I was so juiced mm -hmm. with fame that I was like, I got a little smidge of fame. And I was like, oh, God, I'm getting invited to premieres. Hey, do you want to see Mission Impossible with Tom Cruise a week ahead? Bring your friend or bring someone from the cast. Cool. Super cool. fun. 
but I went to way too many because there's Instagrams where they go, hey, remember this premiere? And here's everyone that was there. And it always, I'm fucking in there. And I don't even remember. And I have some rope belt. I look like shit every time. So let's go down memory lane. I pulled a few of these. <laughs> and uh, let's pull up okay. just random ones. And I'll tell you what I was thinking. They're not all bad. It's just, okay, this right. one is fucking great. <laughs> I don't even know if we should start with it. It's so good. Okay. That this one is for I have a, a key here. This is speed. That's, you look great. This is speed with Keanu. That might be behind me. Either Avatar. No, it looks like Judd Nelson, maybe. Is that a summer premiere? It doesn't matter to me. It, it when be, I have a look, matter. I lock it in. And it could be You've got the game any weather. So I've got cargo shorts. I've got <laughs> one blue sock, which is actually pretty cool. Was that intentional, like a Michael Jackson yeah. thing? Dana, it's called The Future. Wow. And I was the Kanye of that premiere. And I have <laughs> work boots, which were cool. I had those. For, my coat doesn't fit. That would maybe work now. Did not work then. I thought it fit. <laughs> I think it's totally hip. And it has a it has a corduroy color. Thought it fit. Didn't fit. <laughs> the glasses I fucking hate. I can't stand. I have my speed premiere ticket in my hand, but you can't really see it. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm holding a, a hat. <laughs> All stupid. All right, next one. Well, well, wait a minute. You're you're wearing the sunglasses indoor. No, it was the lights, well? Dana. I'm getting. Oh, I'm, I'm like, right. I can't take right. it. No, I was thinking. Very cool. I wouldn't have the guts to do that at that age. Okay, which one's it? This okay. is Farrell's. This is same sunglasses. <laughs> Maybe. I think so. Look at we both went to the tinted sunglass store. I guess tinted was in. I don't know. Farley always looked pretty cool. This is uh, True Lies. And <laughs> I'm doing duck lips, and I'm not even joking. I did them forever. I don't even think they were around. I don't. <laughs> it's a little bit of a jagger. No one was sick of them yet. Kind of... I don't know why I did it. I think it was just nervousness. That was a leather jacket I thought was so badass. And it was, uh, nothing fit me. Not one thing fit me. <laughs> Everything was big, and I didn't know it. I thought they were all fitting and you couldn't see it i couldn't see it and look at i'm giving peace sign like straight ahead and kind of <laughs> grossly far <I> like <laughs> you, you know what he used to do you guys gotta back off the mic they're too good <laughs> they're, they're too good at laughers they don't even need a no, they don't even need a joke they just show the these two idiots <laughs> said, but dana here's a farley used to remember this at premieres they take his picture and he goes not now <laughs> and then he'd say take my picture so dumb so show another one, right? Yeah, that was. I can't believe there's no Dane in any of these because you didn't. You were like, I didn't. Oh, this is a oh, great I was too one. Shy. I love this. This is now. Yeah. Now you. I'm just. <laughs> okay. I look cool. Well, he's. Well, he's kind of like doing a character too, in a way, with those glasses and the hair yeah. slicked. That's when he got cool. Is, there was a point when he combed it back because Christian Slater did when he hosted. And so Farrell's next week, and I go, you're so gross. That's because he goes, Christian Slater did it. And I go, yeah. So he was always <laughs> greasing it back. And look behind us, Jay Moore. Wow. That but wait a yeah. minute. This, this is after Tommy Boy. So you are a star uh, at this point. This is 95. Tommy right? Boy so, came out in 95, so it's around the same time. Because... To have the guts to wear that hat with no <laughs> irony and just was you have to be a star. <laughs> that hat is, I still have you know, it. It's so fucking cool. And the strings are hanging off. And I have a turtleneck. Mm. <laughs> Turtlenecks were illegal for a couple well, of years. Hat fits well. I'm just going to say the clothes mm. seem to work fine. Better. I mean, you got some, got a couple shillings in your pocket. Spain's starting to put the whole motif together of the junior superstar. Yeah. Character. When we went to uh, the premiere of Tommy boy in London, we thought we were famous. It was so sickening. He's like, dude, what if everybody knows us? And we get hounded. I'm like, well, it's not exactly Beatlemania. <laughs> no one even knows who we are at all. And they don't even get the show over there. So we go over on the Concord, no less. I did. It. And <laughs> yep. it's like this. <laughs> land so it took 90 minutes we get there he brings a fucking shillelagh because he stopped by ireland he goes it's lucky so we bring the shillelagh out we go out with hats and sunglasses no one knows who we are it's so embarrassing shillelagh, shillelagh is like, like an irish stick oh 
Yeah. For good and then, luck. And then, right. and then no one knew. So we took off the hat and sunglasses. Then we went to Planet Hollywood so someone would know us. Sickening. <laughs> we went to get noticed and no one did. And we're like, what the fuck? All right, next picture. I just want, I have one question. Yeah. While you were in that hat, did you ever do Wesco Wabbit or do any Elmer Fudd? <laughs> <laughs> I want to get a Wesky Webbit. I mean, did you use that at all? Uh, I don't think so because I thought it was cool, and so I didn't even want to joke about it. You really okay? Here now we're getting into <laughs> makeover time. This oh, is this is nineteen ninety nine. Right this is Big Daddy. Yeah, yeah. You're yeah. This is Big Daddy. Uh, the TV show. What was oh, it Big called? Daddy? Your oh, well, I was on Just Shoot Me. Yeah, I was on Just Shoot so Me. Uh, yeah. It was doing good. It was up on the same night as like Frasier and Seinfeld. So we were in the mix. Yeah. Coat fits a little better. Still does not fit. Like, let's not get crazy. It doesn't fit. <laughs> well, I think the leaves. Uh, well, no, the sleeves of the shirt go underneath. That shirt was know. a guest shirt. Can we ask Chris or Heather? Do you guys think our, our hidden team of laughers? <laughs> what do you think of that outfit? He looks a little more styled in this one. Yeah. Like Much more styled. The hair's mm -hmm. longer. Um, <laughs> obviously. Your teeth, you got your teeth done, quote unquote. They look I great. wish they were done. They look good there, and I don't know what happened since. And look at, I've got, <laughs> those are a bit of mom jeans in a way, but my, my shoes are cool. No. My shoes, because I got a bad neck, they would always sure. kill me. I could only wear them to the premiere, and then I'd have to go back to uh, Sketchers or whatever that was back then. Well, mom jeans would be higher waisted than that, wouldn't they? Yeah, Heather a little bit, but these weren't. A little higher? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's a point. Hmm. But okay, at least I'm getting somewhere. Okay, next one. These are all like flashcards. I don't know what's next. Because I'm it. <laughs> you don't even know what's going on. Oh, okay. Okay. Now we're David 2.0. Oh, my this Johnny is Rotten. New, this is a <laughs> brand new guy. This is. <laughs> Jesus, someone's been watching too many Kurt Cobain videos in this one. I have a fog hat shirt on. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, that was Punch Drunk Love. Mm, that's Julie mm -hmm. Bowen. She looks great. She was great. Oh, right. Um, she was sort of you dated yeah. for a while. Is that what they call it? You dated. And you know what I've learned from wearing guy liner is <laughs> it does it, it makes your it. eyes look too skinny. Like I can't even see. I don't know why I have it on. A Corey Feld. I mean, I don't know what I saw. I have I have well, faded purple about? cords I've, I've, on. I thought those were cool. <laughs> Right, but do you have eyeliner on? Yeah. I mean, like mascara? Mm -hmm. I say it with do no embarrassment. On? <laughs> yep. <laughs> do you have lipstick on? Are you wearing a bra? I just have rouge, lipstick, <laughs> oh, no, a bra, a training bra, and a fucking thong. And a, and a, G, yeah. and a G mm -hmm. string. Yes. Well, it's good that we get to know what's behind closed doors. Now, how... how um, how old are you there? Well, I don't want 11. to that, but, no, <laughs> by the way, poor Julie, she went there with me and I sure she took one look and was like, we're not doing the fucking press line, are we? I'm like, oh yeah. Oh yes, we are. Okay. Keep going. I think there's just a couple more. We can get rid of some of these if they, they're <laughs> no, bombing. This is, these are fun. They're kind of funny. Just talk about, oh, who's this fucking. Oh, now you're grizzled going, mountain is, man. That is, that is still Kirk Cobain yeah. a little bit, right? Wouldn't he wear those? I mean, he'd be spinning in his grave if he's... By the way, is this the first time the scruff showed up? Uh, yeah, I got a little scruffy, and I had a... I never wear a beanie. Mm -hmm. It gives me a headache. I actually don't like them. But I wore a beanie because it was tough hair day. Zipped up leather jacket, a flannel shirt. I used to love that flannel shirt. Of course, my right. jeans are... Not tucked Trashed, yeah. and they're not trashed from doing too much, you know, yeah. hiking and they're... lifting boulders. It's like... I bought them for nine thousand dollars, and and they were already all distressed. Would you have possibly Oof. had a thirty-eight revolver Oof. in your lower back? But does that guy carry a gun or a knife? No, he carries a buck knife, and he stabs you, and then he fucking puts you in an arm hole. Because <laughs> it lo it looks like kind of a, a tough guy ready to fight. I was I was right? kind of like mad Chris, that are taking a Heather. picture, but I go I go into the press line, and then I'm like, what the fuck do you guys want? They're like, well, you're yeah, in a step and repeat. So <laughs> I, I just, think, you know, hey, you know what that guy is saying to everybody? What are you looking at? What? What are you looking at? That's what you're saying right there. What the fuck are you yeah, looking I'm like, at? I'm like huh? Rambo. All right, we'll get off this. That's, uh, that's alpha. That's alpha right okay, there. That's okay, that. we're halfway through the photos. And now we have a current day. Spades of premiere horror.
I will tell you what I did recently, and then I'll let you go, Dana. But um, I'm not letting you go anywhere. I have, but I have nowhere to go. <laughs> I I remember when you heard that I gave this Burger King guy some money. Do you remember the story? Yes. So my and new th- started my, a whole yeah thing. My new thoughts on it. So the thing is, Burger King guy worked there 27 years. I saw him on fucking TikTok, and so. <laughs> I said, he was opening a present. He goes, I worked here 27 years, never missed a day. I was like, holy shit. He goes, and they gave me a gift from Burger King. And it was like a yo-yo and a Pokemon card and like $10 at Starbucks. So I go, that's it. And he was so happy that he got that. And he goes, I'll see you guys tomorrow back at work. And he went, I was like, is he being sarcastic? And he wasn't. So that his daughter made a GoFundMe say, get this guy a vacation. He's busting his fucking ass. So he needed, like, it was like 15 grand. So I, I, it was close, something like that. Oh, yeah. So I put up five grand, got him over the hump to 15, whatever. So they tell TMZ. Well, so, wait a minute. It says over underwhelming five grand. Hmm? Wait. Oh, his, oh, his yeah. gift was Yeah, God, thank you, Jesus. Yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> I was thinking that's that's Yeah, tight. that was back then okay so i i gave him some money okay so he gets to his 15 and then his daughter tells tmz so then they do a story about him and then the next week he's up to like 40 grand i'm like holy shit and then he goes on the today show and they're like so david spade helped then he's dming me and i'm like hey you did a great job he's like is that really you that gave it to me i go yeah man you were nobody works hard anymore so blah blah then he keeps going then he comes to my show in vegas and then it's been a year, Dana, and they go, Burger King guy just bought a house with this 450000 he's up to. And I and then I hit him up and I go, I think after 300 k we split wow. it, guy. I mean, what are the <laughs> rules? I mean, I feel like the house has, has to win a little bit. So how do I approach this? This is probably awkward, and I shouldn't even say mm-hmm. this, but you seem to have the Midas touch. And uh, I'm just going to say this as a soft ask. Mm-hmm. Could you start a Kickstarter for me? For you, <laughs> just saying. You're yeah. doing t- just if it's going to go into seven figures, I could just if ask. If it's going to quadrillion t- Zupel, yeah, you may have the Midas touch. You know the thing is, you 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 your you, new you, nickname you, is Kickstarter. You have, no, it's Great Guy Syndrome, and I have it, and I have a really bad case of it. And so, <laughs> well, I, I, I'd never heard this story before, but I'm glad to. Hear isn't it, it now. good? You know that you're Oops. working with a good guy. So <laughs> here we go. He gets to 50 grand. Then they go, get him to 100 grand. They raise it because it's still pouring in. Get him to 100 and get this guy like an electric bike, you know, poor fucking guy. So they get to that. And then she's like, hmm, let's put it to 200,000. So they just keep raising it. And the last I saw, they want to get it to a million. Oh, it's at 457. He wants a million so he can get four tickets to Taylor Swift. (laughs) I like the paid sure. fucking laughers. Give me a micro chortle on that. My That's the closer. Work stays. <laughs> I, I didn't get picked up anywhere for my charitable work. It'll be quiet. You know what? You got to hire a pre- I just stumbled into that because. Nobody knows. What, uh, what I do. I like when they say, look at George Clooney gave this bum a hundred dollars. And I go, well, if there's seven paparazzi guys walking by me, he's like, here you go. Can you get the hundred? Can you get me and the hundred in the shot? Can you get the guy's hand and me and the bum? Okay. Of course. There's a camera there. Not saying he's not a good guy, but there's a camera there. I'm giving the guy. I'm like, here's my coat. Get it? Did you get it? Come back a little later. Can I get that coat back? It was kind of a bit I was doing. I remember, yeah, Paul McCartney. I, when I first met him, he said, "You know, I could, I could go all over the world. All I have to do is go down to Fifth Avenue and drop me trousers." Oh, what does that mean? He go all over the world and unpress. I go all over the world. So, well, <laughs> uh, if you want to trend, if you want to oh, start trend, to trend, yeah. yeah, then we can figure that out for you. Okay, I got one more thing to ask you. <laughs> okay, I keep saying one I more. I was out of stuff. Forty-five minutes. Are you out of, out of stuff? Okay, my last thing. Then I'll say. I just. Saw oh it. no, I I have stuff I can do. Yeah. Well, first of all, go ahead. I wanted to hear a red red necky. Do you have any loaded? Well, I I can do a few <laughs> red redneckies. I was thinking because people, I did this on a podcast I used to do with Chris Rios, uh, fantastic. But I haven't done it on this podcast much, have I? Mm, well, this one's red, new, but the other one, Fly on the Wall, you've done it once or twice, but it's a hit and people oh, say it. On so. this one. 
I'm Red Redneck, he's a redneck comedian. You ever fart so loud, dog two stayed away, go, what that? <laughs> come and get some. That was the beginning. Where's that come was and get fir- some? Oh, come and- oh, fuck. You ever fart so loud, dog two stayed away, go, what that? Come and get some. Yeah. Oh, I forget my own catchphrase. I know. I uh- you ever- Go ahead. This is just to get on the rhythm. Because what I want to do, I'm going to do three of them, and then I'm going to ask people to send in red rednecky jokes, yeah. and then I will read their red rednecky <laughs> joke. And I'll do one that I was sent in to Chris and I a okay. time ago. You ever crap so big you don't know going to get down that toilet? Come and get some. You, so that's laying the groundwork. Yeah. Sort of the level we're working at. <laughs> you, you ever crap so big you don't know if it's going to get down the toilet? Get down that toilet. Okay. Go ahead. And come and get some. Come and get some. <laughs> For people just hearing this for the first time, it's intentionally supposedly the worst comedian yeah. in the world. That is kind of the idea. But he's got but a catchphrase and he's super famous. Because, well, things bad happen or things that don't seem so great. Mm-hmm. And then come and get some is the ultimate defiance. Mm-hmm. Come and get some. This is one that someone said in and I did, a, I did a rewrite on it. But I asked my mama to wash my tatty whities. She said, sure thing. I said, how'd it go? She said, great. I haven't seen skid mods like that since the Daytona 500. Come and get some. <laughs> that's the longest one we got. That That's a pretty good yeah, that's one. that's a good one. I I asked my mama what's for di- for dinner. She said roadkill. I said what kind. She said I gotta take a drive. Come and get some. <laughs> okay. Some of these are. I think ju- it, there's safety in knowing you're eventually gonna say come and get some. Right. The two the most off putting ones are the, the fart and the poo one, but the rest are just basic <laughs> basic kind of stuff. You see if you get this one. Mm. Uh, my grandpappy uh, invented the phrase dollars to donuts. Every th- time he got a dollar, he bought a donut. He died at 27. Come and get some. <laughs> Heart attack. I don't know what. Guess happened. what, guys? People can write in superfly at odyssey.com if they want you to do more impressions or more from come and get some. <laughs> oh. Okay. Superfly well, at odyssey.com. Yes. Is that our email? Yes. And send it in so rednecky. And also, I'm going to do a runner of Johnny Carson getting pulled over for drunk okay. driving. And you can send in jokes for that. Oh, sorry, officer. <laughs> sorry, officer. I didn't know I was swerving. I had a tangerine torpedo at the cranky pigeon. <laughs> sorry, officer. I didn't know I was swerving. I had a dirty double banana daiquiri at the boozy glow. The boozy glow? Yeah. I like when they rhyme. The fucking it's purple the, nurple. It's the drinks. Here's one. Well, the the original ones, I'm sorry, officer, I didn't know I was swerving. I had two slippery monkeys at the hook and crook. <laughs> See, I like that. I like when they rhyme. And here's one that's on, double. Sorry, officer, I didn't know I was swerving. I had five whiskey sours at the whiskey sour hut. <laughs> <laughs> that's a different way to go with it. It's a little I like what, little different. I like but it. if you if you anyone anyone wants to send some in, it, David, I got one. Do one. Sorry, officer. Okay, great. <laughs> I I uh, I had a few, I had a banana daiquiri at the stinky pinky. <laughs> That's sort of like it, right? <laughs> That's almost like red reg neck. I know. I can't do Carson it to too. you. You're too good. Mm. This I'm back to the Super Bowl, but not Taylor Swift. Nah, that's what you think. Nah, there's also a football game. Okay. So here's what I'm saying: is I saw a few Super Bowl commercials today which is very odd, yeah. the new thing. They show them to you this far ahead. Oh, yeah. A week, yeah, week no more than a week out. Anymore. And so yeah. they have one, and they go, they have all the stars. You know who the stars were? The cast of Suits. <laughs> Folks, I'm sorry. Wow. Um, now, I this is when Meghan Markle was on. Meghan Markle in the hunt. And so she went away, and now Suits, is, it wasn't a big show, but now it is. And so it's on Netflix. It's doing well. Are you really doing a Suits parody? Let me tell you something. When Prince Harry came over here, he said, I got myself, a, he wanted to have a celebrity, a superstar girlfriend. So everyone over there somehow believed that Suits was some fucking hit show with Julia Roberts on it. But <laughs> I'm like, isn't that on TBS? I mean, is it really? She wasn't even the most famous person on Suits. <laughs> Okay, so well, and no one even like, knows what suits is. So when they <laughs> we're throwing around the word superstar a little loosely, that's what I was saying. Now she's a superstar. Now 
But even she will admit now. when you're on a show that's on like, you know, after reruns of uh, Barney Miller, <laughs> too far back, too far back. Um, well, that's he called Prince and now King Charles after he met Meghan Markle. He's daddy, I've met the most wonderful <laughs> woman in the world. She's a superstar and an yeah. American actress. What do you say? What's the Who's name? that, the older one? <laughs> That's the King Charles. Charles. <laughs> what, do you, what do you say? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I just coughed up a Dalmatian. <laughs> anyway, what's her name? Daddy, her name's Megan Marples. She's the biggest star of the world. <laughs> Goodbye, Daddy. I love you. I'll never leave the royal family. <laughs> Very good. And if you don't mind, we have to cough up a half a cow. <laughs> <laughs> Son, I just go. I just Googled her. She's not in what the top one hundred like? famous people in the world. And I just do, do him like this, and I do Megan when he first met Megan. She's like, "Hello, what's your name?" My name's Prince Harry, and I'm from the royal family. Yes, well, I'm Megan Markle from a show called The Suits. Have you ever seen it, Harry? <laughs> That's how they Fuck talk. No. You sounded like Bill Cosby when you did Prince uh, Charles. Oh, Bill Cosby. You should have Bill Cosby. He's he basically Joe Biden and Bill Cosby have merged in a way. Yeah, Cosby is what the best is that. And go to Bill, go to Lady. I like the <laughs> stiffness. No, I'll get looser with the show. I need I need a better chair. No, I like that you're you you actually no one even mentions your full bed behind you. This is the video. <laughs> we do have a we do have a studio coming, guys. This has been a presentation of Odyssey. Superfly is executive produced by Dana Carvey and David Spade. Charlie Finan of Brillstein Entertainment. Jenna Weiss-Berman of Odyssey. Heather Santoro and Greg Holtzman. Hope you liked it. Mm-hmm.